Hey guys, welcome. Yeah, so I have done enough math today to be mathed out, but I found this really cool problem, so I had to make a video of it. Now, uh, the question is, what is the area of this crescent-shaped blue region down here at the bottom? And one approach to solving this problem starts like this. Let's draw an x-axis right here, and then a y-axis along the dotted line, and that way, um, the center of the big circle would be the origin. So the X and the Y axis will meet at the center of the big circle. Then that means that the equation of the big circle um, looks like this. X squared plus Y squared is equal to big R squared. Um, right? Um, all right. From there, we can solve for Y and get the Y is equal to plus or minus the square root of big R squared minus X squared. Now, I said plus or minus the square root of, but you only see the minus here. That's because plus or minus the square root of big R squared minus X squared represents the top half and the bottom half of the circle. The plus part, the top half, and then the minus part, the bottom half. And I want the minus part because, well, I want the bottom half of the circle, this curve. And the bottom half of this uh, maroon or red circle is represented by the equation minus r square root of big R squared minus X squared, and I've called it Y1. Um, now, since the origin is the center of the big circle, if we call this dotted uh, line, this vertical distance, if we call it L, then this uh, a smaller circle is centered at 0, comma, negative L. Therefore, the equation of the uh, smaller blue circle would be this, X squared, plus y minus a negative l squared equals little r squared, where little r is the radius of the smaller um, circle. And then here, minus minus, we can turn into a plus. And so the equation of the smaller circle is better represented by this. And from there, it's pretty clear what we want to do, which is solve for y, right? And when we solve for y, well, again, we'd have to write plus or minus the square root of little r squared minus um, x squared, but uh, for similar reasons as above, I chose the minus part because I want the bottom half of um, this uh, smaller circle. So that's why I chose the minus square root instead of the plus square root. But we're not done here because uh, to get y by itself, we still need to subtract L, right? And L, remember, capital L here represents the distance of this uh, vertical distance of this dotted line. So uh, then getting uh, y by itself here, we see that it's minus l minus square root of little r squared minus x squared. And I've called it y2 because this here represents the equation of the bottom half of the smaller circle. And so now using good old calc 1, I'm going to find the area of this crescent-shaped region by doing uh, the integral uh, y2, uh, or rather y1 minus y2. So the integral of this curve, which is y1, right, minus y2, and then um, integrate from this point here along x to this point here. But wait, this point here along x is negative r, and this point here along x is positive r. Therefore, our area of interest can be found this way. Integral from negative r to negative little r to little r of y1 minus y2 dx. Yeah, okay, cool. So that means that we've got this because um, we've got y1 minus y2, but when I do minus y2, this is going to be plus and this is going to be plus, and so I want to lead with the positive. So I put uh, minus y2 first, which is right here, and then plus uh, y1. So in other words, I can write y1 minus y2 if I want as minus y2 plus y1, uh, and that's what I've done here, right? Okay, minus y2 right here, and then plus y1, right? Okay, cool. Um, all right, all right. Uh, and then next, I see that actually I can make three integrals out of this, um, right? Like this. Okay, cool. And then next, I see that actually I can exploit symmetry, which is like since the y-axis vertically is supposed to be along um, the um, vertical dotted line, if my y-axis is right here, um, I could just do the area from 0 to r and then double it, right? 
And so that's what I've done here. I've gone from zero to R and then I've multiplied by two everywhere. Now, because it's cumbersome to have to write two again and again, I'm going to abandon the two for now and remember that I have to multiply by two. So this equal sign shouldn't be there because they're clearly not equal. One is double the other, right? But um, yeah, this equal sign is inappropriate. However, what I'm saying is let's abandon the uh, twos for now and we'll remember at the end that whatever the value of this integral, we have to multiply it by two. Yeah, okay, cool. I think we're running out of space, don't you? So let's uh, set this aside here and then uh, come back to it. Uh, well, actually, make room, sorry. Um, yes, I told you, I'm not just mathed out, but I'm like, you know, it's like 8, 10 p.m. and it's a Saturday night. Obviously, like, you know, I have a very fun life. I do, actually. I love my life. Um, all right. Uh, nothing better than making math videos on a Saturday night. Um, all right. Okay. I wanted to get rid of the equal sign, but we'll live. We'll live. All right. Let's continue from here. Well, first, notice that I could take care of this simple integral right here. And it's just LX evaluated R and 0. Um, but otherwise, I have these two uh, integrals involving square roots. And you imagine that this is where the trick sub is going to come in, right? Now, the um, LX evaluated R and 0 is just going to give us L little r. And when I say r and 0 here, I mean little r and 0, yeah? So we get L little r and then this integral plus that integral. We see. Now, most of the work is going to be about these two integrals. So I'm going to, in a second, set aside this LR and just work on these two integrals. Now, to work on this first integral, we're going to do trig substitution. Um, and the substitution we should make is with x equaling r sine theta, meaning dx is going to be r cosine theta d theta. That's for this first integral, right? And little r sine theta. Okay, and dx is little r cosine theta d theta. For this, our substitution is going to be uh, big R sine theta. But first... Let's figure out the limits of integration and what they're going to become. Now we're going from um, x to r sine theta. Well, this first guy is going to mean that we write 0 is equal to r sine theta, right? Because this is an x value, this lower limit, 0. And then we divide by r on both sides of this, and we get 0 is equal to sine theta. And sine inverse of both sides of this is going to give us sine inverse of 0, which is 0. And then on the right side, we get theta. So theta is going to uh, be 0 uh, here for the lower limit. And then for the upper limit, uh, we're going to say r, little r, is equal to r sine theta. Dividing by little r on both sides of this, we get 1 is equal to sine theta. And doing sine inverse of both sides of this, we get theta is equal to uh, pi over, over 2, or sine inverse of 1, right? Okay, 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 cool. And then similarly, uh, as I said, for the maroon integral, we're going to make the substitution capital R sine theta and goes without saying why dx has got to be that. And we also have to work on replacing the limits. So first, uh, replacing the zero limit, it works out that way. And then next, uh, replacing this little r limit, which is going to work out this way. Yeah. OK, cool. So I think uh, we're pretty much ready for our um, trig substitution. And as I said, I'm going to set aside this LR. But don't forget it. Don't forget this LR. And also don't forget that we have to multiply this whole thing by 2 to get the correct final answer, right? Okay, but don't forget our little a little uh, R and L, cap big L here. Yeah, okay, cool. But uh, now working on these two integrals with the substitutions that we have handy means that we write them like this. And again, we need space. So let's hoist this up top and then make space. Um, and we do that like this. Okay, cool. Now, um, this shouldn't be your first video on trick substitution. Uh, but yeah, if you've done it before, you know um, the name of the game next, which is this is r, little r squared minus, and it's going to be little r squared sine squared. And then you're going to factor out little r squared, and you're going to get inside the square root little r squared times the quantity 1 minus sine squared. And that's why you made the substitution with sine, right? And so that means you get this here for the first uh, integral, and then you get this here for the second integral. Now, clearly inside the square root, uh, little r squared comes out as little r, and then 1 minus sine squared is 
cosine squared. So uh, this whole thing is just r cosine, um, including the square root and everything, uh, and little r cosine, right? And similarly, this here is capital R cosine. And so you have little r cosine here multiplied by little r cosine. So that's little r squared cosine squared. And here we're going to get capital R squared cosine squared. So doing both, uh, I'm saying we could write this. Ah, didn't mean to move that. Okay, and then next is um, next is where? Well, this. Um, so we take out this little r squared, right? And then we take out uh, this big R squared because they're constants, right? And uh, otherwise, you have to do the integral of cosine squared. Well, a while back, I made a video on the integral of cosine squared, and so I'm not going to do that here. Um, and so cosine squared theta has as its antiderivative a quarter sine 2 theta plus 1 half theta, right? That's why you see it here and here, uh, the integral of cosine squared, right? Okay, cool, cool, cool. So that's what we have here, only we need to evaluate at 0 and pi over 2 here in the first part, and then we have to evaluate a 0 and sine inverse of little r over big R in this part, right? Okay, so, so that means that um, once we do that, we have this. And again, uh, I shouldn't have an equal sign here because this is just merely the integral uh, w if it didn't have limits of integration, right? Um, so I guess I should take this part because it's just showing you the antiderivative of cosine squared twice, right? Otherwise, you know, I'm multiplying this by this constant and that constant, but I didn't take into account the limits of integration in that last slide. So um, I hit it, this slide, right? Okay, cool. But this is a correct follow up to this, right? Okay, um, because we've evaluated as we should, and clearly you don't see the evaluation at zero because um, sine of zero is going to be uh, zero. Well, let me bring that uh, slide that I hid back. So here we're going to get sine of 2 times 0. So that's sine of 0, which is 0. And then 1 half 0 is 0. And similarly here. like So that's why in the evaluation, you don't see the, um, the 0 plugged in. You only see the pi over 2 plugged in from the first integral. And then you only see the uh, sine inverse of little r over big R plugged in from this maroon integral. Um, but yeah, that's the reason. Okay, so uh, we're pretty much done here. And uh, now, where to? Well, s some simplifying. Specifically, 2 times pi over 2 is pi and so on. So um, now, sine of pi is 0. So this quarter times 0 is going to go away. And so that means that our um, answer is going to reduce like that. Um, otherwise, you know, without knowing the value of little r and big r, we can't say more about this part. Um, but yeah. Uh, this is it for our final answer, except we said we're not going to forget to multiply by capital L times, uh, well, sorry, we're not going to forget to add capital L times little r, and then we're not going to forget to multiply by 2. So if you bring back capital L times little r, so if you add that on and then multiply by 2, your final answer uh, correctly displayed would be this here, yeah? Okay, cool, cool. Um, that's it. And um, one reason why this question is pretty interesting and fun is like looking at this final answer, you could experiment like, you know, at what would happen if L is zero, right? That's like if they both had the same center, right? And then what would happen if the small circle has um, the same radius as the big circle where, well, surely here in sine inverse, um, you'd have if the small circle and the uh, big circle would have the same radius, you'd have sine inverse of like 1, and we know sine inverse of 1 is pi over 2. So like there are interesting like kind of like side results that you can think about. Um, so that's one reason why uh, this question is fun. But uh, hopefully the other reason why this question is fun is everything I've said uh, for the last however many minutes. Yeah? All right, cool. I hope you enjoyed this and keep watching. Take care.